As you're well aware, we're living in unprecedented times. Join us now for today's special program. I want to spend my life mending broken people. I want to spend my life removing pain. Lord, let my words heal a heart that hurts. I want to spend. established in our praises as your people declare your mighty works sing along at home blessed be the lord god almighty who was and is and is to come blessed be Welcome to this time of prayer and praise as we are um, doing a special two-hour uh, live. Uh, uh, we are in the midst of the 10 days of prayer that is airing on the Praise Hymn Network. Um, and it's been a real great time of revival and, and for me, a, a, just a time to draw close to God. And I hope you have been watching that. If not, um, you'll be able to to uh, tune into that probably on YouTube at some point. But um, for now, I want to get the family around the piano and just uh, kind of delve in a little deeper. And tonight I thought it'd be kind of nice to um, pray in this first hour, especially uh, the Lord's Prayer um, and each line breaking it down um, and uh, just maybe take some notes or, or pray along with us <laughs> at home. Um, this is for you and for us, and God is our Father. That's what we have in common. I'm thrilled to be a part of the family of God. And uh, as I said, the family of 3ABN is right here with me. And John, I know enough of your testimony to um, know some of your uh, the relationship issues that uh, you grew up or didn't grow up with. Um, and you know, I, the thing I love about uh, Christianity is it's not a religion; it's a relationship. And so um, what, a, what an awesome way I think that this would be to just open the prayer uh, from your perspective. So um, our Father who art in heaven. You know, when I hear the phrase our Father, it's special to me having been born, finding out many years later that my dad's name, my father, wasn't even on my birth certificate. Oh, wow. And I was dropped off at a home at three months old and God in his mercy, knowing the journey that I was going to start, provided a father for me, a man who never had children of his own. And at 50 years old, he decided to become my father. And I know in the world there are many children that can identify with people, even when they pray, they can't say, our father, because their father 
son or daughter relationship has been so broken and tragic. And so I, when I think about our father, I, I think, wow, you know, years ago I wrote a song, and my wife is aware of it, you know, um, if, if he only knew that their roads would part, what would he say? And then the second part, if he only knew their roads would meet, he'd begin to say. And so when I hear that song, Our Father, oh, even the 23rd Psalms, I've often said, if you could begin the Psalm, Our Father, then everything after that is going to be a part of your experience. Yeah, right. So I'm, I'm, I praise the Lord. You know, Paul the Apostle in Romans 8.15 brings it into such sharp focus when he says, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoration by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Um, I remember the stories people told me as I was growing up. My sister would tell me stories because she also was left there. She was three years old when I was three months old. And they would tell me that I would wake up at night crying for my pacifier. I couldn't even say pacifier. I said right. paya. And my father would get up at night and go to the store and buy one for me Wow! just so I could sleep. I didn't intend to do this. <laughs> he would get up and go and he said, I got your paya for you. And I'd not knowing that that hand had nothing to do with my genetics. But a years later, I'd say the father is the one, not just who brings the child in the world, but the one who stays around yeah, yeah. to see him through hard times and tough times. And my wife can tell you a lot of who I am is because of my father. So when I think about the importance of being in a relationship with somebody we mm. could look at and say, our father, it gives me a joy to be able to pray and when we start a prayer, my wife is, you know, when we pray together, um, she says, when you begin your prayer, begin by praising your father, mm -hmm. thanking him and honor him and raising him up in, in honor. So I, I think this is a great time to just say, let's go to our father. Amen. Yeah. Uh, years ago, I heard a story when Ellen White would pray. She, would say, she wouldn't say our father. She'd say my father. There you go. Sweet. And HMS Richards Sr., he said, I remember hearing her pray in public once my father amen and he said how it was the holy spirit just filled that place so right now you know wherever you might be i don't know what your relationship is with your father i know mm. there's probably somebody looking at this that doesn't know so let's just go right now and pray and ask god our father our father my father which art in heaven but who, who also truly abides in our hearts we pause and thank you as we think about these 10 days of prayer. How can we pray just for 10 days when every morning there's something to pray about, something to thank you for? But thank you for being an attentive father, a father who provided all of our need, a father who saw our journey before it unfolded and decided to pad it, finding a heart of a man who had room to be a father, who didn't care about the genetic connection didn't care about the financial responsibilities, but just saw this little tender child grasping for someone to hold on to, and he decided to step in. And Lord, you did the same. You came to a broken world who didn't know who their father was, and you stepped in. And you taught your disciples, when you pray, just don't forget, our Father. Pray in this way, our Father which art in heaven. So we praise you, and we thank you, Lord, for being our Father. As that is an honor to call you, may it be an honor that we live as your children. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Sing holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
Angie, I heard John say that uh, when, when, he, when you pray, that you like to start the prayer off thanking him and, and acknowledging that he is holy and that yes. he is God. Yes. And uh, that's what I love about you, especially I, I've been with you many <laughs> times out on the road when we've been, um, after John has preached. Yeah. I, and even during, I love to watch you because you're cheering him on and, and you are encouraging him. And um, anytime I hear you talk, it's, you're always edifying him. And I love that uh, as, a, as, a, as a wife, as a pastor's wife. And so I love that um, I think it would be appropriate, in fact, to um, give you this line, hallowed be your name, holy be your name, God, uh, because you are so good at, um, yes. at loving and worshiping so much. Praise the Lord. Proceed. God is so good to us. And when I look back at the name, hallowed be your name, I think of growing up, my mother used to say, protect the name, protect your name. Mar, my maiden name was Mar. She said, when you go out in the streets, you're carrying our family name. And I think of that, how special the name was. And it still is to me, the name. And when I think of my Lord, I think of hallowed be his name. He's a mighty God, strong tower. And it says in Psalms 18 verse 10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. And in Proverbs 22 verse one, it says a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. And I believe and I trust in the name of the Lord. It is my strong tower. He is righteous. He makes me clean. That name of God. He's a sanctifier. He's called us and set us apart. He's a healer. He heals all my diseases as well as yours. He's victory. He has defeated my enemy. He's my shepherd. He speaks to me and he leads me. He's the peace in the midst of my storm. And he's the provider. He provides all my needs. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Precious Father in heaven, what a privilege it is to call you my father. You are my strong tower. I have run into you many times, and you have always come through. Lord, blessed be the name of the Lord. You're worthy to be praised and adored. And we lift your name on high. Thank you, Jesus, for being there, for being there for every one of us, everyone that's viewing and listening, Lord. Help them to know that you are there. You are their father. You are their rock. You are their healer, their provider, their strength. They're all in all and my all in all. So we give you praise, honor, and glory in the precious and the most worthy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Sweet. Praise the Lord. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way, hold o'er my being absolute sway, fill with thy spirit till all shall see. come to um, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And uh, as I was thinking about this program, I thought that reminds me of my boss, my president, Greg Morricone, uh, such a humble man and um, a, a man that I 
Greg, it's been amazing. I've, we've got pictures over at the Sound Center of you working as a printer, uh, you working in the, uh, the mobile uh, travel truck unit. Um, you've, you started at the bottom of this thing. And um, here you are. Now we have to get an appointment with you. <laughs> no, My actually, door we don't. Always open. Uh, yeah, your door is always open. And so, um, you know, uh, I think of thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We have um, our agenda, but I know as a president of 3ABN, you definitely, um, even though you have all of us servants as your, to your sub, as your subjects, we want to be in accordance to you. We know that you follow God, and as we all do. But um, I think you see the correlation. <laughs> yeah, and thank you, Tim. You know, we're all a team together. You know, Absolutely. we're all part of the family, and we're all our goal is the same. And of course, yours at home too. And Tim, I just want to say first before we talk about that part of the Lord's prayer, thank you. What a great way to start the year. Here we are in 2021. Thank you for putting this program together. It's a privilege and honor to be together. Amen. You know, the family, there's a huge family here at 3ABN, and we'd had everybody on if we could. Sure. But uh, what a privilege it is to serve the Lord together. And I think back to last year, 2020, we had no idea when we did this program a year ago, right? We did one for 2020, January. Yeah. We had no idea about the coronavirus and how that would affect the world. No. And I know that a lot of people's plates, even now, probably seems so full, don't have a job, trying to figure out the education situation with kids, family members that may be sick, family members that have died, lots of things. But we know that we can always trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And that Jill and I were talking to someone recently that um, they're taking a big step in faith. They don't have a job, they're not sure what God has for them, but they are standing firm. They know that God does have yeah, something for them. Right. So, you know, I think about a lot of times we have our own agendas and what we want to do, you know, Tim. But I like this here in uh, the Lord's Prayer. And if you want to find it, there's several places in the Bible, but Matthew chapter 6, and uh, what Tim is referring to is verse 10. It says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And I think, Tim, here what you're talking about is um, thy will is in God's will be done. You know, we want, I know, I have ideas and things that I want to do, but when we pray, we want to say, God, you know the end from the beginning. It's good for me to have plans, but Lord, I want to trust you and you know what's yeah. best. And then sometimes it's just wait. Sometimes I become impatient, Tim, yeah. and I want to do something like right now. But it's good to say, okay, God, ultimately it's your kingdom. We're here to serve you, Lord, and uh, just wait on him. So. Yeah. I think, Tim, as we're looking at the, this year, 2021, I just want to rededicate my life to the Lord and just say, okay, I want to follow you no matter what challenges or things we're facing in this life. It's ultimately, we're here to serve uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, yeah, let's, let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, I, I do thank you for this time where we can spend this time in prayer and praise, opening your word spending this time with uh, some of our family here at 3ABN, but also with those that are viewing and listening right now. I don't know what everyone has faced this past year, but you do. And I liked what Pastor John was talking about earlier, talking about his father here on this earth and how his father heard his cry for a pacifier and did all that he could to provide that to Pastor John when he was just a little baby. And Lord, we think about you as a God, one that is holy, 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 but also one that is willing to figuratively, figuratively give us that pacifier too when we cry and to help us whatever our need is. Thank you, O oh Father, for being that kind and wonderful and gracious Father. And Lord, this, this year that we're in, we just want your priorities to supersede anything that we have. So my own personal life and, of course, the ministry of 3ABN, Lord, we just dedicate to you. For it is yours. And we are here as vessels that you can pour through to others. We thank you for hearing and answering all of our prayers. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessings all mine with ten thousand beside 
night. Sing with me, guys. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. The line in the Lord's Prayer that says, Give us this day our daily bread. Um, I know for myself, I, f I forget to take this literally um, because it says, this day, our daily bread. Um, I can go to the store and stock up, and you know, we have a lot of people who, um, in, in, in times of um, angst <laughs> and, and unsurety, uh, they'll, they'll store up their closet full of, of, of goods, um, dried goods and canned goods, and, and just, um, and I think we sometimes, you know, we let our, our, our scaredness uh, get us um, beyond this. We, we get beyond what's today. Um, but I know that uh, Jill, as COO, um, as Vice President of 3ABN, um, you, you and Greg both, you are constantly looking to God uh, for just get us through today. <laughs> and yet you've got an eye to the future, but, uh, but you are definitely saying, uh, give us this day what we need to get through. And so I think it might be great for you to um, address this line in the, in the prayer. It's a privilege to share with each one of you. Privilege to open up the new year with that rededication and reconsecration to the Lord Jesus and a privilege to share with you at home. Amen. You're part of the three being family and we're just so grateful for that. This line, give us this day, our daily bread, is interesting to me because sometimes when I pray, I want to start there. You ever there? Yeah. Okay, God, give me, <laughs> right. right? We are of initial prayer when we come into God's presence is, I want this, I need this, give me this. But you notice it's in the middle of the Lord's prayer. Mm, it didn't start with, give us this day. It started with, who are we and who is God? Yeah. He is our Father. It starts with praising Him and accepting His will in our lives once we reach that place of surrender once we recognize who he is then we're in a position to make our petition known to request of him and the thing i love in this passage of course there's literal bread and we need that every day um you think about many times in the bible times they were paid daily they didn't make a lot, and they would be paid at the end of the day their wages, meaning they just got enough for bread for the next day. It was just what they needed. And many times we come to God saying, but I want this, and next month I'm going to need that, and next year I'm going to need that. But what He promises us is what we need for today. Yeah, right. But I see another analogy in this, not just physical bread, not just the necessities that we need, but spiritually. Yes. Jesus said in John 6, 34, I am the bread of life. And you think about in Matthew 4, the temptations, and when Satan came to him, to Jesus, and said, turn these stones into bread. Um, and he said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So every day we are called to come into his presence and say, God, I'm broken. I am weak. I need you. I need spiritual strength just for today, not for tomorrow, but I need it for today. Are you feeling weak in this new year? Do you feel like I need help? I need grace. I need strength. Do you need peace in your life? 
God has promised that he will give you what you need just for today. Maybe today you don't know where tomorrow's food is going to come from. Maybe you don't know. Maybe you lost your job due to COVID. Maybe you lost a family member and, and you're struggling in that. Psalm 121, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Why do we do that? From whence cometh my help? Your help comes from Jesus. We can think we depend on the government. We can think we depend on the church. We can think we depend on other people. But none of that. We depend solely on the Lord Jesus Christ. Our help comes from the Lord. Why? Because he made heaven and earth. Because he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Because he sees your need right now. Right. And because he wants to hear. Because he wants to answer. Let's go to him right now in prayer. Holy Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We need you. God, would you give us this day our daily bread? I'm praying right now for my brothers and sisters, those watching, maybe that mama with those babies, and she's on her knees crying before you. God, would you just give me bread to feed them just for today? God, would you look upon her? Would you hear her cry? And would you fulfill her need just now? I think of Father, that, that husband who maybe lost his job and wants to provide for his family, but he's not able to. God, would you stand in the gap? Would you provide the needs of that family? I'm thinking of my brothers and sisters who spiritually Maybe they need strength. God, we need strength. We need hope. We need grace. Whatever our need is right now, God, would you supply it? Thank you that you hear. Thank you that you answer. Thank you that we can trust you with the little things in our lives and the big things. And we lay before you our needs knowing that you are going to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have just a couple of other lines in this prayer um, and so Ryan it was between me and you and whenever I um, I just kind of flipped a coin and um, then uh, your name came up on forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and I thought well you know I think you're going through some school right now aren't you and um, it's true don't you probably have a line in there where you could pray for um, some forgiveness of debt <laughs> on your school debt. That's, so that's maybe true. this does apply to you more than just um, <laughs> luck of the draw. <laughs> right, right, yeah. If you, if anyone who's been a college student, unless you had a full ride all the way through, yeah. um, uh, you know, some scholarships, um, that that I can resonate with that thought. Um, but yeah, this part of the scripture says, "Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors." Mm. It's conditional. Yeah. 
Mm. You know, when I, when I think of this part of this prayer, there's many people that don't fully understand the significance of this. I think forgiveness is probably one of the hardest aspects of life for many people. It's one of those things, as you hear a lot of people say, you know, I don't, I don't think I could ever forgive you. Or, or, you know, there's people that struggle with even forgiving themselves. Yeah. And, um, but forgiveness exists because of love. And love only exists because of God. And that's why I love 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, because it gives us the very foundational um, truth of forgiveness. That if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And it's a package deal, Pastor. <laughs> He doesn't, Jesus didn't die on the cross just for, to forgive us, but to also cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, Jesus makes it very clear that if we cannot forgive others, then He can't forgive us. That's a serious thing. That's a salvational thing. And, you know, there may be someone at home right now that you're struggling with forgiving someone. Um, someone's hurt you. Someone's done something that you cannot even possibly... You can't possibly think of forgiveness because it's too hard to comprehend. There's times in my life when I have perhaps been done wrong. Uh, perhaps I have done wrong to someone. And um, in the end, everyone desires forgiveness. But it's a gift. It's a gift granted to us. Um, What humbles me when I think of forgiveness is when I think about how none of us deserve forgiveness. And you hear some people say that, you know, that person doesn't deserve forgiveness, so I'm not forgiving them. But yet you and I don't deserve forgiveness because we nailed the Son of God to a cross with our sins. And um, I certainly don't deserve forgiveness for what I have done to him. But Jesus is the example. And he, he rises above all of our sins, all of our problems, all of our guilt. And he pours out that love. And he says, I'm willing to forgive and to forget. If you can forgive others for what they have done to you. I mentioned earlier, maybe you're having a tough time for forgiving yourself for something that you've done in the past. Um, We place it in the hands of Jesus. That's why this prayer exists. That's why Jesus prayed this prayer. It's a model prayer that we can trust in the fact that if we call out to God and say, Lord, forgive us. I think of the publican beating his chest. Oh, Lord, forgive me a sinner, right? I think of the, the father running to that prodigal son. He didn't deserve forgiveness, right? He was running to that son because he loved him. And in, the, in that father's eyes, he deserved forgiveness because of the love he had for him. I think of that young woman laying on the ground at the feet of Jesus, people picking up stones about to give her what she deserved. Jesus wasn't going to have it. <laughs> Jesus said, where are those who condemn you? They're not there. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. That's the gospel. Wow. The very heart of the, love, the loving heart of God, it burst with forgiveness. And so I want to pray right now. I want to pray for those at home that are struggling with this. Pray for those that may be struggling forgiving themselves or dealing with the very concept of forgiveness in general. God can soften your heart and he can bring answers. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, you are so mighty and you're so wonderful. And there's not a single soul on this planet that can deny your goodness. Lord, 
Lord, you showed us how to forgive. But the reality is there's some people here that may be watching this program that may just be trying to muster up all the, the strength they can to get on their knees and even utter a prayer to you at this moment that are struggling with forgiveness. And Lord, we know how important that is to you. We know that it's a life or death situation. But you want to see all of your people saved. But we have to learn to forgive. So Lord, I pray for that person right now who may be experiencing the pain, the heartache, maybe going through trials and tribulations, whatever wall that has been built in their life that's preventing them from to forgive. Lord, you're a master at dealing with those walls. With your love, Lord, anyone can forgive, even the hardest, most difficult scenarios. And Lord, there may be someone right now who is struggling to forgive themselves for whatever they have done, whatever they have participated in, or whatever has occurred in their life. Father, we pray right now in Jesus' name for that person. Yes. Because some people cannot even begin to grasp your love, the love of the cross, the love of the Son of God, if they can't stop for a moment and realize that Jesus also died for whatever sins that may have occurred in their life that's preventing them from forgiving themselves. Lord, do your mighty work in the hearts and minds of all of us. Give us godly mercy, a godly meekness, a spirit of humility to be like Jesus and to forgive others their debts so that you can forgive our debts. We place this situation in your hands, Lord. And we ask this in confidence and in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Ryan. Um, we come to the last line in the prayer that says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil or from the evil one. And uh, I know a lot of people have, uh, they're opposed to the idea that they're, that a loving God would, um, would, would have a devil in the world and that um, it, it just doesn't make sense. Um, but, but Ephesians 6.12 says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. In other words, we don't wrestle against each other, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. And we are also told in the Bible that um, Satan roams like a lion seeking whom he may devour. Um, and it's, I have a, a coworker that uh, we often say though, uh, even though we know that um, Satan is real and evil is, is, is a real force, um, sometimes we are, our, <laughs> uh, we are, it's like Satan sometimes is no big deal. It's us that we have the trouble with. It's, we know our, uh, our tendencies. We know our own way. Um, we're just, sometimes I feel like I'm rotten to the core. But um, we have a Savior whose blood cleanses us from all sin. And I am eternally grateful, and it is because of him that we can have eternity to be grateful. Um, but I, I was listening to a pastor recently. He was uh, preaching on, on, on this line, and he used a, a great example of a, a, of a child. Uh, in this case, it was a son who had was raised in a Christian home, and he was doing, doing, going the right path, and then he made a decision uh, to do something wrong. It, uh, and in fact, the, um, the preacher used a graphic um, that 
uh, looks like this. My drawing isn't exactly symmetrical, but um, anyway. And so he talked about how the child starts walking and he'll walk down and then he will um, go down this path that would lead to Satan or to wrong. And instead of choosing this path, which would re lead to uh, the right way, God. And um, the son actually said, well, dad, it's really like this. And he turned the paper sideways and he said, I, I'm walking along doing the right thing. And then I get to that fork in the road and um, the, it's like the pull. It's, it's easier to go downhill. And so I, I just start going down. And then by the time I realize I'm going down um, to go up, I would have to go back up here and climb up here. All that to say, we know the force of gravity is strong in, um, and it's, it's really strong in temptation, time of temptations. I don't know of anyone, no matter how pious, no matter how well Bible studied they, they are, who, um, who isn't tempted because the Bible says even our Savior was tempted. It says that he succeeded in not giving in to it, but um, I'm grateful that uh, you and I have a Savior again who loves us and, and, and he will forgive us of our sin. Um, and so I just wanna pray for those of you who think maybe you have gone so far um, that God can't forgive you. You can't go that far. I really believe that. Because if you, if you desire his forgiveness, that's the key right there. So um, I just want to, uh, and, and naturally, I mean, that would be my prayer is that I would never be led into temptation um, but be, and be delivered from evil um, because I'd rather be delivered from it than have to go through it and then definitely have to go through the repercussions of having gone through it. Um, but um, I just want to pray for you and for all of us um, that we, in, and especially in these days that we, that we um, fight temptation, that we our, our strength, um, we will rely on the strength of God to, um, to fight temptation, but to know that um, he will forgive, that he loves you. And um, so let's just pray. Father God, Lord, you are so wonderful, so faithful, so patient, kind, and, and a tender, loving God. And I want to thank you for the times that, um, that I have even led myself into temptation. Lord, I love the fact that your word declares that um, really there, there, there's not a place that, that we will um, be where you give us that way out, actually. Um, and so many times, God, I, I regret saying that I can, I can analyze it and look back after I have even given in to a sin, I see that place where you were faithful. You were like knocking on my window saying, uh, why don't you do this instead? Oh God, I just pray that you will give us the strength to resist temptation, to turn from it, because we are promised that Satan will flee if we, if we resist it. Oh God, you are good to us, so faithful, and yet, when we do give in, you don't throw us away. You pick up the pieces and you um, forgive us. So Father God, I just ask that you will minister to that heart that they long for a seventh and a 15th and a 500th chance they think it's that that would be too asking too much. But God, I, I just ask that you will let them know that you love us so much. You're in, you're in this for us to win. And so I just, um, I just, I give you praise for being a, a God who is above temptation yourself so that we can be like you. I pray that you will lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thank you in Jesus' name. So many of you know that there's a song uh, that is the Lord's Prayer. And um, I think it'd be only proper for um, Ryan to sing that. 
Um, so make this your prayer. Forgive us our debt as we forgive our debt. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver. So I think uh, it would only be appropriate to take that last line. Um, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And uh, let's just each one of us uh, take a moment just to thank God that, uh, to me, that says uh, he's got the whole world in his hand. That's right. right. He he wraps it up. He wins in the end. That's right. Who else is worthy to have all of that that was written in that beautiful prayer? Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. You know, as we enter into this new year, we have to keep that in focus. That's good, brother. We just came out of a, a quagmire of a fight over power. Men rise and fall, but God's kingdom remains. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and Amen. ever. That's the Amen. kingdom that I want to be a part of. L- let me rephrase it. That's the kingdom I am a part of. Hey, there you go. I I've always it. said to people, cast your vote in favor of the kingdom that, that will never come to an end. Right. Praise God for that. Amen. Yes. Angie, you want to just say something about uh, being a part of the kingdom and, and, and thank God. <laughs> yes, God is so good. He's so worthy. And to be a part of the family of God is a blessing because he is our God. He's our Father. Yes. Hallowed be his name. Yes. And I just praise him. He's so good and worthy of praise. Amen. So to God be the glory. Amen. Great thank things you. he has done. I'm so grateful that God is our Father. Grateful that He is your Savior. 
grateful that he is our sustainer and provider and protector and defender. Where would we be without God? That's right. You know, I often wonder, how do you go through life and don't have someone to lean on? Don't have someone to depend on? As we start this new year, I just want to rededicate my life to the Lord Jesus and um, praise him for he is worthy of praise. You know, Tim, I'm, I'm thinking of those that are joining us at home right now, and I just want to say we're thankful to you. Yeah. You know, because 3ABN is here, of course, because of the Lord Jesus Christ, but it's because of you. And, you know, you're making a difference. We've been hearing this past year about essential and non-essential, essential, but you're essential. You're essential to God, and you're making a difference in the world from your prayers and financial support for the ministry of 3ABN. We get to see the letters, emails, phone calls that come in from lives, and maybe you're one of those lives that have been changed for eternity, talking about the kingdom of God, Pastor John. Wow, what a wonderful day that'll be. Many of us will never have the opportunity of meeting face to face on this earth, but one day soon, Jesus Christ is coming soon. And so we're just thankful for you. Thank Amen. you for being a part of the ministry, the family of 3ABN. Praise the Lord. Amen. Mm. Ryan? Amen. What does it say? Fear God and give glory to Him. Hmm. That's a message that goes to the entire world. That's the beginning of the three angels' messages that goes to the entire world in the last days. The, the everlasting gospel. And part of that everlasting gospel is declaring Him to be worthy. Revelation says that He is worthy of worship because He has created all things. And the Bible says that He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the beginning. He is the end. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And there's not a day that goes by, no matter where I am, whether I'm at home, in my vehicle, coming and going, at my desk, here at 3BN, um, or on set like this. There's not a moment that goes by that I'm not reminded to lift up a praise to Him. Because none of us would be here doing what we're doing. 3ABN wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Him. You know, we talk a lot about Brother Danny's faith, right? Praise God for Brother Danny's faith. But you know what? More than that, praise God for himself, for God who worked through Brother Danny and every single other person that has worked hard to put this ministry together so that this message, this three angels' message, the undiluted truth of God's word can go throughout all the world. Yeah. Amen. He is worthy, Tim. Amen. Yeah. And that's why, that's why we're here. And uh, so, yeah, praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen, praise the Lord. You wanted to say something I could see? Just one more quick thing. <laughs> You're you know, good. I love prophecy. We all know the bad, and that's just something we live on. But I love it in Daniel when the Lord showed Daniel Babylon, Medo Persia, Greece, and Rome. And then that image, the, the, the image that was just so glorious in all of its metals. But it says, in the days of these kings, the God of heaven, will set up a kingdom right. which shall never be destroyed. Yeah, right. And it shall not be left to other people. Yeah. That's the kingdom. Citizens of the United States, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters of the world, that's the kingdom. Don't get distracted. Don't get caught in the quagmire. There's a, there's a stone that's going to bring all of this kingdom down to just nothing but dust and memories that won't even come to our minds. Be a part of that kingdom. That's why we exist. That's the purpose of 3ABN. That's the vision that God gave to Danny. That's the vision that God gives to us. That's the everlasting kingdom. I love it. I love it. And so that's a great way to lead into this song. Uh, Your kingdom shall reign over all of the earth. Okay. Let's sing it. Your kingdom shall reign over all the earth. Sing unto the ancient of days. For none can compare to your matchless word sing to the ancient of days every tongue every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory every knee shall bow at your throne in worship you will be exalted O God and your kingdom shall not pass away O ancient of days 
Amen. Ancient of days. Praise the Lord. I love the uh, area that we live in. We live in, um, especially in the rural country where at, at, at this time of year, um, it is gets dark early and I, I can go out, outside uh, at night in the evening time. I look up in the, 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 it, the day, it looks like daytime actually, but it's just the moon shining so bright. And I am amazed and in, in awe of, of a God that I know as my father. Um, and I know that he created this world. Um, and I am um, just in awe of him. And it reminds me of a song, which everything does. But um, this, this song right here, Then Sings My Soul. Sing it at home if you know it. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Lord God, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arms, and nothing is too hard. Nothing is too difficult for him. Thank you so much for taking time this hour to join us. We invite you to come back uh, right this next hour. We're going to be praying some more and praying for you. Continue in a spirit of prayer. Thank you for joining us again for the second hour for of um, prayer and praise. I want to thank you for the first hour uh, team here. Um, I love your hearts. I love your uh, desire to pray and your desire to let God move in your lives. So thank you very much for being an example of, of in, to me. I, I love that. It's great to work with people that you love. And um, so this hour, I want to just um, take a lot of topics that are universal topics um, that we know that we get prayer requests in, into our um, w prayer warrior um, requests from for, in pastoral that um, uh, that these categories will cover because we know you have needs and so as you are hearing these prayers uh, know that uh, we are praying for you we love you and um, we 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 want to honor your needs and your requests and take them to the Father for he's the one who can take care of it all. So um, our first um, topic is um, on discernment. And I'm reminded of John 16, 13. And it's a prayer that I've been, been praying um, for uh, several weeks now. Um, that's, and says, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. So I've been waking up every morning saying, Holy Spirit of truth, lead me into all truth. And that's just a wonderful prayer. I encourage, in fact, you to, you to pray that yourself. But I want to start with a song that uh, reminds me of, of that. And it's, a, it's in, in the hymnal. Um, it's one I don't hear a lot, but uh, you might know this. So sing along. If you but trust in God to guide you. If you but trust in God to guide you and place your confidence in him you'll find him always there beside you to give you hope and strength within for those who trust god's changeless love build on the rock that will
It's a great reminder if you will just let God guide you. Greg, you want to pray for us? Sure. I like this, Tim, far as I have the words here to the song. For those who trust in God's changeless love. God doesn't change. No. Powerful, isn't it? Not As human bit. beings, I know I'm kind of back and forth at times, but God doesn't change. Right. He's solid. Yes, he and uh, it says, build on the rock that will not move. Praise Amen. the Lord Amen. for that. And I like Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge who? Him. God. That's, That's right. right. Amen. And He will direct your paths. Praise the Lord. Father in heaven, Lord, I just pray for um, trust. Trust in you. We pray for discernment. At times, the way may not seem quite clear, but Lord, we know that you have the direction. So what we need to do is sit and trust in you. And then when we see you opening the way, Lord, that we would go forward. I think also of the Israelites as they put Mm -hmm. their feet into the water, it parted. So God, also give us that faith when you say go forward and it looks impossible that we just go ahead and go forward. Father, I thank you, though. This is prayer and praise. I praise you for those that actually have the gift of discernment. And Lord, thank you for those. And Lord, may we listen to the counsel around us as well. But Father, may we always turn to you for our only source of strength. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's been three years since I stepped into my position here at 3ABN. It was in January of 2018. And to me, Molly Steenson, who was my predecessor, was a woman of discernment. She had great wisdom. And I remember stepping into that office and sitting behind the desk for the first time and feeling like, God, I'm just a little child. Remember Solomon prayed that? I don't know how to go out and I don't know how to come in. and. I definitely don't know how to lead. Would you give me wisdom? And I claimed many times, many, many times, James 1, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men and women liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given to them. So if you're in a position right now where you're not sure the right right direction to go, you're not sure what is the right decision, you need special discernment, send up a prayer for help. I can't tell you how many times someone would be walking in my office and I'd say, God, I need you right now. Just one of those fast prayers as they're coming in to sit down. God, please, right now. I need you. Would you give me your wisdom? And God says he'll give it to you. God, we come before you because we don't have wisdom. We don't have discernment, but you do. And so, Father, right now we seek for wisdom in those decisions that we're making, that they would be in accordance with your will. They would bring honor and glory to you. And Father, for my brothers and sisters, as they're making choices, that you would lead, guide, and direct. And thank you for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Speaking about discernment is an amazing thing, uh, as Joel included in that wisdom and, and understanding. The Bible talks about not only discernment for us, but I want to flip the coin a little bit, look at discernment from a different perspective. For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And then the Bible is referred to as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's what reminds me the Bible is living. You've got to be alive to discern anything. Can you imagine reading the Bible while the Bible is reading you? <laughs> well, think about that. That's, that's, the, that's the Word of God. God in the Word. If we recognize that God is in the Word, only then can the Word of God be in us. In the beginning was the Word. It was not only the spoken Word, but the living Word. And when the living Word left, 
he left the written word. But the spoken word was alive, the living word was alive, and the written word is alive. And when I think about that, every time I open the Bible, you know my wife knows there are days when I'm just thinking, okay, Lord, my schedule is so heavy. It's Wednesday and I just don't know what I'm preaching on. Please tell me, what do your people need to hear? And, and Angie knows, we have this, it's not a ritual, but my wife knows me so well. She even sets a different kind of music on Friday evening because we like music we could sing along with. And sometimes it's straight up gospel, you know, black gospel, or sometimes it's Christian contemporary. Sometimes it's Christian music generally. Sometimes it's 3ABN. Sometimes it's uh, a Pandora or, uh, or iTunes. She has such a flavor. Sometimes it's Gaither or Heritage or any kind. But on Friday nights, she sets it to like what you're playing right now. Because I told her, I said, music, honey, unlocks my mind. And if I hear anything I need to sing along with, I can't think. And you know what? I want to thank God that when I'm reading his word, his word is reading me. And it reminds me of the great responsibility. So right now, I want to just recalibrate you for the new year. Don't just read the word of God. Let the word of God read you. Because the word of God will never see in you what God cannot and has not already seen in you. The Word of God will see in us what needs to be changed. And that's why my favorite preacher who's resting in the Lord, he said one of the reasons why we know the Bible is not written by men, it reveals the worst in us. If men wrote it, it would reveal the best in us. But it always shows us where we need to come up a little higher. So right now I want to pray that for this new year, you'll allow the Word of God to read you. Don't just let the Bible become a, an assignment but let the Bible become an examiner of your hearts, your thoughts, your deeds. For only as God can clear you for the kingdom will you be allowed to go in. So right now, let's pray for God's word to be the discerner of us. Father and our God, it's humbling to know that we are never out of your sight. That even darkness is light to you. But Lord, we don't walk in your light because or hide from your eyes, because we, first of all, we can't. But may the thought not even frighten us, but may it humble us. That we might live soberly, godly, and righteously in this present life, looking for and hastening, as the Apostle Paul says, the coming of our Lord. What a day that's going to be. Father, I pray right now that for this new year, that if we haven't picked up the Bible, Maybe we don't want the Bible to read us. Maybe we don't want the Bible to reveal to us who we really are. But the Bible is not just a book of instruction, but it is our examiner. It is the very thing that the Lord Jesus left to get us filed down and ready for that eternal kingdom. And Father, we won't fit in until our rough edges are smoothed and our tempers are calmed and our spirit is in harmony with yours. So, Lord, I commit myself, my wife and me, as we read our Bible all the time, Father, we recommit that this year our Bibles will read us and that we will know that you are examining us, getting us ready for your kingdom. Help us to accept that discernment of your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Ryan, you want to read a couple of those verses? Yeah, absolutely. Um, on discernment. James chapter 1, verse 5 says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let a mask of God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given him. And of course, one of the greatest counsels in all of scripture, Romans 12 verse two, says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that the testing that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Wisdom and discernment comes by the work of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, we live in a world, it's not so pretty. <laughs> um, and we, we've been told and counseled many times that the Spirit of God is being withdrawn from this planet 
the closer we move and get toward the second coming of Jesus. And I just want to urge whoever's watching right now, um, God wants to open your eyes. He wants to give you wisdom. He wants to give you discernment. He wants to dial in your spiritual vision so you can see his love and you can see the world through his eyes. You can, you can see it through the lenses of love. But that only comes by accepting the wonderful gift of discernment that he wants to bless upon, to bestow upon you and to bless you with. And so, you know, I just want to pray right now that same prayer that um, Elisha prayed for his servant. Open his eyes that he may see. God will open your eyes, but even in opening and pulling back the shades, there still has to be an effort on our part to receive. And so I want to pray for that right now. Father in heaven, oh Lord, you open blind eyes, Lord. Our minds can't even begin to comprehend that because the work that you do is so beyond our understanding. You're so wonderful. And Lord, I, I just want to pray right now in Jesus' name for all those people who need to see you for who you really are, not through the eyes of the enemy, not through the eyes of the world, but help us to see you through the lenses of Jesus Christ. Lord, open our eyes that we may see. And once you have given us that beautiful spiritual eyesight, help us to be able to receive the spiritual mind of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. And in faith, we know that you will continue to do what you do best, and that's change lives and transform hearts. We thank you and praise you, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We enter into a time now of prayer and praise for perseverance, um, persistence in doing something difficult. And um, I know I need help. I get distracted and um, I need perseverance. And there's a, a song that reminds me of this, another one that we don't often, I don't often sing. Um, so um, I'm gonna sing, um, Oh Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Be thou forever near me, my master. shall not fear the battle if thou art by my side nor wander from the pathway if thou will be my guide it's great words <laughs> if thou will be my guide I think um, so um Pastor, you want to you want to start with us um, on that topic? We'll go back and sing a couple of verses here in a little bit. Sure, perseverance. I was talking to someone just, you know, about facing the challenges of life, and um, it's a very dear friend of ours. I'm going to be very vague, and they were talking about recounting all the loss of life this year, and we've had a lot of people we have lost here. Uh, not to COVID, but other things. And they were recounting, they said even the word journey is not a comfortable word. And I said, think of it as a course instead. I said, because Paul, when his life was coming to an end, he said, I fought a good fight, yeah. perseverance. I finished my course. I kept the faith. I could all summarize all that, persevere. There may be somebody who's wondering, man, how do, I, how do I get ready for 2021? 
If 2021 is any indicator of what 2020 was, I'm sure there are people probably saying, Lord, could you please hurry up and return? I don't want to go through this again. Right. I mean, we could never have in our wildest imagination, my wife and I were talking about this, because you know, here at 3AB and we travel, we have to cancel all of our trips. Right. And things are getting to the place now where countries don't want us to come in unless we have verification that we had the vaccine and people are nervous about the vaccine and just all these things that are just a part of a vortex of worries in the world. And people are wondering how much of this can we take? And even sanity is now losing its rightful place. Not that people in general are crazy, but there's so much to grab onto that people are not knowing what to pull. So I want to just encourage you right now. Uh, I like this scripture. Just gave it to my wife here. Uh, it came to my mind. It's amazing that you had it because I was thinking about it. When you talked, the moment you mentioned perseverance, the scripture came to my mind. 2 Timothy 4, verse 7 and 8. This is what you want to be able to say. Through the hard times, difficulty, through the cold and hot days, through the unknown and the known, through what's on the news and what's in God's word, you got to hold on. I have fought a good fight. And uh, as my, one of my favorite authors says, God never requires anything more than he requires of you. Right. Think about that. <laughs> he, God never requires right. anything more than he requires of you. Right. He will never do that to you. So what did God require of us? To fight that fight. And as Tim, I think he said, we don't fight against the devil. Right. We're fighting ourselves and our own tendencies. <laughs> And we're fighting the fight of faith. I fought a good fight. Hold on, my brother, my sister, husband, wife, children, teenagers. And then also, don't quit. The worst thing to do is quit when you can see the finish line. And if you can't see the finish line, you know, there's a text that Jesus says, you can discern the signs of the sky, discernment, but you can't discern the signs of the times. My brother, the finish line, sister, the finish line is not far away. I want to be able to say, I finished the race. Right, absolutely. Now, I'm, a, I'm mindful of athletes. Some of them have run so hard. Excuse me for being morbid here. Some of them, I'm going to use the intellectual word, they regurgitate after they cross the finish line because they have put everything they can into it. Right. They don't want yeah. to be seen as a person that didn't give it their all. Right. If the runner does that for a temporary medal, do that for an eternal That's right. run. That's good. And then he says, I have remained faithful, the NIV. And now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. I'm going to pass it back to you here just before I pray. But, you know, in the Olympics, there's the gold, there's the silver, and there's the bronze. And everybody looks up to the person with the gold, and the guy with the silver, Eh, I'm the first place loser. <laughs> and the guy with the bronze, eh, I'm the second place loser. But, you know, they hold on to that medal nonetheless. They made it on the podium. Now, I know in, in the kingdom, the race is not given to the swift who finishes first or last. I just want to be on that podium. I just want to get that crown. And uh, say, it, say it again, honey. Lay aside every weight yes. when you're running that race. That's right. Right? That's right. That's right. Let it go. And there's things in people's lives that they will not let go. But there's a lot of things, but you got to give it to the Lord. That's right. You have to, so you can finish that race right. where your crown is waiting for you. Go that's ahead. Right. So get the righteous sneakers, the light, lighten that load, get rid of the stuff that's bogging you down, that's right. and pray for the Lord to give you perseverance. Finish the course, fight the fight, keep the faith, and then you'll be able to breathe as you train for eternity. Isn't that Amen. nice? Amen. We're yeah. training for eternity. Let's pray right now. Father, sometimes we are our own worst enemy. That human nature that is still hanging around our doorstep, sometimes it sits at the dinner table at night with us. Sometimes it waits for us at the foot of our bed. Sometimes when we're putting our slippers on to go brush our teeth, we step on the toes of our human nature. And we wonder, man, is this how my week going to be? Is this how I'm going to start off the week? Is this any indication of me being in my own way? Father, give us a glimpse again of the finish line. Give, give us a glimpse again of that crown of victory. But even more than the material things, give us a glimpse of Jesus, yes, who made every provision for us to persevere. 
was so wonderful when he was on the cross. He says, I finished the work that you gave me to do. We pray for those of us here at 3ABN to be able to one day, whether sooner or later, be able to say as we see the skies and the eastern plains breaking open, we'll say, thank you, Lord. We finished the work you gave us to do. So I pray for those husbands and wives, like my wife and I, together forever, eternity in view. May there be couples that are watching this that say, we're going to persevere through our differences, through the things that we don't agree on. We're going to pray and put it in God's hands, and we're going to persevere. To the parents, love your children through their changing yes, times. Yes, yes. Teenagers are teenagers. We've all been there. Love them through those days where you just don't want to call them your children because one day you're going to be proud of them. But do all that you must do to help them know the future can be theirs by your guidance. And I pray for the young people. Put down that phone and pick up God's Word. <laughs> Let there be some vision of eternity before you so that you can see that God can give you something to persevere. It's not a like on Facebook, but it's His shed blood on Calvary. And so thank you, Lord, that we can persevere if we simply put on the whole armor of God. And may it be our desire not only to push, but one day may we may be able to breathe on the other side of the finish line. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Greg, do you have anything to mention? To well, thinking about perseverance, you know, I like to go out in nature. That's um, comfort for me. You know, I like to just sit and watch nature, hear the birds. And this past summer, I was sitting in, in the forest and I heard a little rustling in the uh, leaves and the grass. And so I looked around the tree and uh, there was a box turtle, an Eastern box turtle, just going along its merry little way, but it definitely had a goal in mind. And as I took a closer look at this box turtle, it was um, battle scarred and battle weary. It uh, had some scars on its shell. It only had one eye. The one eye that would, was left, the other eye was all sealed shut. And as this turtle, made its way for some place, I'm not sure, through the forest, it came across what looked like, to me, it was a pretty small stick, but for it, it was a pretty big stick. Sure. And you know, that turtle didn't just sit there and say, Phew, I'm battle weary, I'm battle, battle scarred, I got one eye, I got scars on my shell. In my brain, it looked at that stick and said, okay, I'm gonna figure out a way to get over this stick. And that little turtle struggled over that stick, and on the top, it was balancing all four little legs, you know? Yep, yep. But it made it over the other side, and it kept going toward the mark. So it's come to mind, Pastor, with you talking about this too. You know, we are so close to the finish line right now. Have some battle scars or battle weary, may have one eye. We've got some injuries, yeah. but don't yeah. give up. No, don't no, quit. No, no, no. Jesus is coming soon. We got to press toward the mark. That turtle and it took off through the forest, and I don't know where it was going, but it had some place it was going that was important. Well, we've got some place yes, that we're yes. going Amen. that's important, Amen. and that's the kingdom of God. So think about perseverance. That little turtle taught me a great lesson of just yeah. go forward no matter what you faced or what you've been through or gone through. Amen. Better to go to heaven with one eye. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. Yeah, or can't see it all. It's going to be restored in heaven. <laughs> but it will be restored as long as you get there. Exactly. But it didn't just sit back, Angie, and just say, you know what? I'm tired. I've got a lot of injuries and a lot of problems. It just kept going forward. Even though it faced the giant thing in front of it, which was the log for it, it made it over. Kept on going. I love it. Amen. I love those movies that have that uh, almost like an underdog uh, who, and you just <laughs> yeah. you, you you know that they have they have to work all the harder to yep. reach that. And I'm I'm on there. I'm praying for them. I'll be watching the movie and I'll say, Lord, help them, help them. You know, and I just I go there. So the text Philippians, what is it, three fourteen? Press toward the mark. Right. Right. Yes. So yeah, and run to win. Need. Amen. 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 Can I, can I just add something Please to pass. that? Because we're talking about turtles and the slow things of the <laughs> nature. We wonder why God made them. I think it's the teacher's perseverance. Mm, nice. <laughs> I have a saying, my wife knows this, at the beginning of one of the presentations we did at the Benton Civic Center a few years right, ago, right. I began by saying, um, the snail crossed the finish line. And people said, huh? I said, tonight, let me ask you a question. Have you ever been to the snail Olympics or snail race? I said, I, I, I bet you haven't because you couldn't sit there long enough <laughs> for Patience. them to cross the finish line. Yeah. The snail crossed the finish line. Prophecy, ever so slow, but ever so constant. We're about to cross the finish line, so keep persevering. That's good. That's good. That's good. Let's move on to um, 
boldness, uh, the topic of boldness. Uh, we all need that uh, in the day that we live. And um, a, a song that I'm reminded of that says, My father is rich in houses and lands. He holdeth the wealth of the world in his hands. Of rubies and diamonds, of silver and gold, his coffers are full. He has riches untold. I'm a child of the King, a child of the King. With Jesus my Savior, I'm a child of the King. And one of the reasons that that fills me with boldness is, I mean, what can't I do knowing I'm a child of the King? Amen. I can do this. Amen. And so I am bold in, with His power. So, um, Jill, you want to speak to this? To me, boldness comes from a place of knowing who I am. If I don't understand who I am in Christ, then you might be afraid. You might close the blinds and stay at home and sit alone because you don't want to go out or you don't want to face the world or you don't want to face your neighbor or that person that you know you're supposed to forgive or that person that you're supposed to reconcile with or you don't want to have that difficult conversation or that confrontation because we're afraid. But if we understand and if we know who we are in Christ, in Christ, let's jump over real quick and then we'll speak again to boldness, but uh, let's jump to Ephesians. I love Ephesians chapter one because there's this entire list of who I am in Christ. Ephesians one, in Christ I am blessed, verse 3. Verse 4, in Christ I am chosen. In Christ I am blameless. In Christ I am predestined and adopted and accepted and redeemed and forgiven. In Christ I have wisdom. In Christ I have knowledge. In Christ I have an inheritance in Him. If you know that, if you believe that, if you stand on that, who wouldn't have boldness? Knowing right. who Amen. we are in Christ. There's a scripture here I like you had, Tim. It says, Joshua 1, 9. See that I command thee, be strong and of a good courage. And why are we that way? Because we know who he is and we know who we belong to. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For I, the Lord your God, I am with you wherever you go. So no matter what you're facing today, no matter what mountain you're trying to climb, no matter what difficulty is in your path that seems insurmountable and you might feel afraid or anxious or timid right now, God says you are his child and in him, all his promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. And you can stand on the word of God. Know that you go forward in the boldness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Holy Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Not because we are worthy, but because you are worthy. Not because we are righteous, but because you are righteous. Not because we are holy, but because you are holy and you have forgiven and cleansed and made whole. God, you have set us free from the bands of the enemy. And right now we ask for boldness in the name of Jesus. We claim the promises in your word, those hundreds of times where you have said, be not afraid for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God, would you hold us? Would you lift us up? And would you enable us to stand on the platform of your word with that knowledge of who we are in you. God, thank you for that. And we claim your boldness in the name of Jesus. Amen. I once was an outcast, just a stranger on earth, a sinner by choice, an 
an alien by birth But I've been adopted My name's written down An heir to a mansion A robe and a crown That's you So you should be bold and sing I'm a child of the King A child of the King With Jesus my Savior I can do anything For I'm a child of the King Amen. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Uh, Let's move on to um, the topic of being downcast. I know that um, a lot of you might uh, feel down, feel blue, especially after the holidays even. Um, But uh, this song reminds me, um, Be still, my soul, the Lord is on thy side. Bear patiently the cross of grief or pain. Leave to thy God to order and provide in every change. Be still, my soul, thy best, thy heaven. Ryan, you want to say something? The downcast. You know, when I was looking down here at this scripture, Philippians 4, 6 and 7, um, this is my wife's favorite scripture. I'm going to read it. It says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We live in a world of anxiety, people who suffer with anxieties, depressions, and all other types of mental illnesses and illnesses and ailments and different things that people just this world beats you up it just it just it's just the reality of, of the world that we live in but I love Philippians 4 6 and 7 that I just read because it reminds us that God understands that no matter what you're going through no matter what you're feeling It's the battle of self, right? You're battling, a lot of times we're battling our own minds. We're battling our own anxieties and fears, discomforts. But you know, there's no one ever that has dealt with more anxiety, more fear at times, I'm sure, more um, trials, struggles than Jesus. There's anyone who understands is Jesus. And, um, you know, I just want to say a prayer for those who might be struggling in that area. You wake up every day and it seems like you can't put one foot in front of the other. And, um, you know, I have a loved one who deals with anxiety and um, a certain mental disorder, um, OCD. A lot of people think OCD is just, you know, you got to have things in the right place, but there's different forms of obsessive compulsiveness, you know, and and uh, it's a real thing, you know. People really deal with this stuff, and a lot of times, from the outside looking in, you know, we as as people that don't deal with these things, we don't understand it, and to us, it just doesn't make sense. And even as Christians, sometimes we can cast things upon people and say, "Oh, you just, you know, you just need to trust God more, right?" You, yeah. You know, wow. you just don't trust God enough. And, and um, until you've been in that person's shoes and mm-hmm. until you've experienced it. 
It's real. And we all have our struggles. We've all at some point in life been downcast. And we need to be picked back up. And Jesus is a professional at picking you back up. So I want to pray for that right now because I know he's listening. And he promises us in his word that if we ask anything according to his will, that he hears us and he will answer. So let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, before we've even met today to talk about these things and to pray, you are a hundred steps ahead of us. You see what we don't see. You hear what we don't hear. And you understand things far beyond what we can possibly comprehend. And Lord, this life sometimes can dish out some some pain, some discomforts, some trials and tribulations that it's just hard to def- hard to deal with, Lord. But you understand because you've you've been through the valley. You've walked through the mire. You've you've been through the most you've climbed the most difficult mountains. And so, Father, I'm praying right now for those who are struggling fighting to keep their head above water. Yes, Lord Jesus. Whatever they may be dealing with, Lord, you already know. We pray for them in Jesus' name that you will give them a sense of hope, that you will shine your bright light of love into the darkest shadows of their heart, that you will cover them with your loving spirit and that you will bring them peace and comfort and hope during these times to help them see that you're still there that even sometimes in the silence of it all you're still there we praise you God and thank you because I believe with all my heart, mind and soul that you're going to answer that prayer pray this in Jesus name amen be still my soul thy God doth undertake to guide the future as he has the past thy hope thy confidence let nothing shake all now Shall be bright at last. Be still, my soul. The waves and winds still know his voice who ruled them while he dwelt below. Why so downcast, O oh my soul? Put your trust in God. Put your trust in God. Let's move on to um, the category of purpose. Beginning um, this year, uh, I want to live my life every day, no matter what year. Um, I'll be um, older this year. (laughs) This, This month I'm celebrating another year older, yay. So, um, but my purpose is, is to serve Christ, to follow God, to live for Him. And um, the reason I say that is because Jesus is all the world to me. My life, my joy, my all. He is my strength from day to day without. Greg, can you talk to us about purpose and pray for those who are needing that confidence that they can have purpose? 
Yeah, great, uh, great topic, Tim. You know, I think sometimes we can feel, you know, why am I here on this earth? Maybe right. you at home like, you know, I don't even know why I'm in existence. I may be the only one. Think of what if the sunshine said, you know, I'm the only sun out here. I'm tired. I've been shining bright for years and years. I'm done. You know, folks, I am done. Man, <laughs> lots of Whoa. people would notice. Right. We're in farm country here. That's good, brother. What about the little kernel of corn? Thousands of their planted, millions probably here in this area, this region, Illinois. One of the little seeds this planet says, you know what? Forget it. I'm just one That's little good, corn brother. kernel. Awesome. I'm not going to sprout this year. I'm just going to stay here. I'm just going to rot in the ground. No one will ever notice. But what if every, all of those said that? We'd have no corn. Even one of those little corn kernels didn't. One kernel of corn grows into a stalk, right? And then ears of corn. And on that right. ears of corn are multiple kernels, yeah, that's good. which will feed many people, animals. <laughs> I love it. There's a reason there's a purpose for yes. that little kernel of corn to sprout. For us, there's a reason, a purpose that we are here. I think about John 3, 16. It says, for God to love the world, okay, then I'm insignificant. But whosoever will, that goes to personal level to me. So that's one person. So God died for you. Yes, thank you. You are here for a reason and a purpose, talking about purpose. Yeah. And you may look at 3ABN and say, wow, I can't be on the air. I can't reach the millions like 3ABN. You know what? you can reach somebody too i think sometimes people just look at everybody else and i right. can't do anything but man there is something that we can all do so there's purpose we're here for a reason and a purpose let's pray father in heaven thank you god we've been chosen by you you've got a plan for us as jeremiah says father our life is significant especially to you you love the entire world which is made up of individuals and Father, thank you for being willing to come and live inside of our hearts, but yet you're so big that you created the entire world and the universe. Thank you for being interested in the little details of our lives. Lord, we all have purpose. We all can make a difference to those that uh, we have influence with. May we gain courage and strength in the year 2021. Lord, that you've given us a reason to live and to be alive and that we can bring others to a knowledge of your love. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Anybody, wanna, anybody else want to speak to purpose? I love Jeremiah 1. You have the scripture here. Um, Jeremiah is a young man. Um, maybe he felt like he couldn't do the job. And yet God said in verse 4 and 5, the Lord gave me the message. I knew you before I formed yes. you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nation. So even before you were born, yeah. God knew you. He saw you. He formed you. And he had a plan and a purpose for your life that only you can fill. That's our incredible God. I just am so grateful for that purpose. Amen. Amen. Yeah, there's one here, the Angie's showing. I'm going to have you read it, honey. That is beautiful. She always has these, she gives me gu great guidance and direction, but she's like, she likes to be this silent. <laughs> she's a good supporting yeah, actress. <laughs> a lot of my sermon material comes from her. Yes. Because while I'm reading my, while I'm doing my sermon, she's reading. Nice. And so, yeah, but yeah, I, I like this, this one. Text. In Psalm 139, 16, I'm the eighth child born to my parents. Number eight. And we always say, what, eight is enough? <laughs> there was a show <laughs> called Eight is Enough. And I'm the eighth child born. And my mom and dad uh, were in England. I was born in England. And that's where I lost my father. All eight of us were without a dad. And it was just devastating to my mom. But I love this text. My mom said I was like, almost like a surprise baby here you know I'm here it comes number surprise. yeah number eight and <laughs> she's like oh no i'm pregnant again <laughs> <laughs> and i love this text in psalm 139 verse 16 it says you saw me before i was born every day of my life was recorded in your book every moment was laid out before a single day had passed and it's beautiful. And I think of even your mom, honey, mm. when she said she was pregnant with you. Yeah, I remember. And what did she say? She thought she had a, a stomach virus. Yeah, she did. 
I'm a stomach virus. <laughs> and she went to, back then they had exploratory surgery. Oh and the doctor that did the exploratory surgery, he said, uh, you don't have a virus, you're pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> and here I am. She said she saw you tucked in. She saw you tucked in, her, in the, the doctor saw you tucked yeah, in the womb. And she said he just closed it up and left there. And it was not like sonic, all that stuff they have nowadays where you see the, she said no, and he said, you'll be okay, just take it light. And there I was before a single day. That is powerful, before a single day came to pass, God knew that there was not a wife for me in America. So he picked this girl in England. Amen. Amen. And her dad said, I would never go to America. And he allowed her dad to be laid to rest in Jesus, just to send my wife to America for me. That's powerful for me. <laughs> God didn't that. see a single wife in America that he wanted me to be with. <laughs> I don't want to dog America, because I'm from America, but he said, I'm sending him an English Jamaican girl. Yeah. Yeah. And I've yeah. been blessed. Yeah, because my dad did say I would never step foot in America. Oh, wow. He said over my dead body, literally. <laughs> but but um, <laughs> here we are today, 30, this year, 38 years of marriage. 38, that's right. Amen. And God has been so good to us. Amen. He's, we've been through quite a bit. Right. And any married couple, you go, through a, you go through challenges, right? Not Greg and Joe. No, no. <laughs> They're the exception to the rule. Every, <laughs> not Greg and no. But when you have the Lord in charge of your heart and you go to him for your answers as a couple, he's there for us and Amen. he's always been there for us. So right. there may be couples out there that just can't persevere right now. You can persevere with God right. as your center, your hope, your anchor, and he will pull you through it. Put self aside and focus on God. That's my message to you. Amen. Amen. That's good. Amen. Thank you, sweetie. Ryan, you have... Yeah, no, I, Jill mentioned Jeremiah 1, but I got to throw in there Jeremiah 29. This oh, is man. Right here. And hearing <laughs> what Pastor just said about how the Lord had a plan, and this is it right here. Jeremiah 29, verses 11 through 13. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. I love that text because it's. I can just imagine God saying, don't tell me what to think about you. Yeah, nice. <laughs> don't tell me what to think about you. Lord, Lord I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just lowly, I'm nothing, I'm a nobody. Don't tell me what to think mm -hmm. about you. Mm -hmm. That's good. Because I already know what I think about you. Yeah. Thoughts of peace, yes. right? Yes. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. What is that? That's purpose, right? Oh, man. And I love what it continues to say. Then you will call upon me and go pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I love that text because it reminds us that as uh, Brother Greg brought out so beautifully over there, we might, to us, we, we, it might seem like we're this little tiny insignificant speck. But in God's eyes, I mean, if he can see that little sparrow, you better believe he knows who you are. Amen. You're not here by just some coincidence or happenstance. God has a plan for your life. And, and he has a purpose for you. My favorite verse, that's my second favorite verse that I just read in Jeremiah 29. My favorite verse is uh, Philippians 1.6. Beautiful promise that he who has begun a good work in you. Oh, being yeah. I got to start with him. Being confident. <laughs> being confident of this very thing. That he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. If that's not a promise of purpose, I don't know what is. I hang on to that promise because there's times when I feel not even that tall and I come to God and say, Lord, why? Why, me? why why have you called me here? I'm so unworthy. I don't deserve to be here. I don't deserve to be doing what I'm doing. I don't deserve any of the goodness that you've bestowed upon me. And he's quick to remind me, keep your head up, press yes, forward. Thank you, Lord. Because one day soon, I'm going to complete that work that I've begun in you. And that's a promise we all can look forward to. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. As we uh, come to the close of this time together, I think it's a, a fitting thing that uh, we start, we finish this prayer and we start this year off um, for those who are burdened with guilt and shame uh, because you don't have to bear that this year. 
That's that's so last year, or it was actually never, because uh, because Jesus has um, done away with that. So it, you take your um, burden to the Lord and leave it there. Um, his grace is marvelous, and marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount outpoured, there where the blood of the Lamb was spilled. Let's all sing it. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that Make 2021 the year of grace, the year of grace, not of failure, not of regrets, not of dragging the past over the line into another year only to make this worse than last year. Bury the awful things that happened in 2020, all the disappointments that the world has tried to throw at us through the portals of media. Say no, no, no. I love the way you said that, Ryan. When, we, when God has a plan for you, my brother, my sister, don't take that vision that God has for you and say, no, you can't possibly see that. It has not yet been revealed what you shall be. But we know. All those words of confidence. <laughs> but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. How are we, Ryan? Sweetheart, Jill, Greg, how are we going to get to that finish line? God's grace. For by grace. Don't let that word be so familiar that you forget what it means. For by grace. Doctrine is important. All you believe is so vitally important. But God's grace. Without that grace, this world is a hopeless place. But with that grace, the work he began, Ryan, he's going to finish it. Mm. Amen, amen. He's got to finish it. Amen. That's right. Amen. Jill, you want to just finish for us? Just want to appeal to you at home. Um, you might feel weighted down by guilt and shame. You might have that burden. You don't have to carry it. The Lord Jesus said that he died so that you can be set free. I just want to pray for you right now. Holy Father, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for your forgiveness. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all sin. We come before you with our brokenness, with our emptiness, with our filthy rags, claiming the blood of Jesus. If we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We accept and receive that gift of purity, that gift of holiness just now. And thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So this has been a great time. Thank you. Um, thank each of you. Thank you for your heart, for prayer. And thank you that... Um, You've been faithful to the Lord, each one of you. I love you, and um, I'm so proud to stand with you. And this is going to be a wonderful year. In Jesus' name, amen. For you at home, don't give up. Uh, we're in this thing to win it. So let's do it for, for the Lord. God bless you, and um, come back another time. Amen.